Hello oh, Duckies, Andy Lip here, back with another OBS tutorial and this is a new update to the Move Transition plugin by Exceldro. He has added the option of being able to make count down and count up timers directly in OBS. No need for another script or anything, you just need the Move Transition plugin. This is 2.5.1, we're going to go into it. It can be a little bit confusing a little bit, we've done it a little bit on my stream when we were first messing about with it. But hopefully this tutorial will teach you exactly what you need to know and how to do it. All right, guys, put your rock in the stone. Let's go. The first things first, we need to get it all downloaded and installed. It's just here on the OBS website. This is Move Transition 2.5.1. Who's going to head up and press download? All these links are going to be in the description down below, so don't worry about any web pages or anything. And you just need to choose your desired platform. Your best bet is using Windows Installer. I like to install mine manually, so I'm going to download this zip file and show you exactly where to put it. So jump into your downloads folder, which should be in here. We've got the Move Transition 2.5.1. You can just open it up, and we're just going to copy these two folders that are in there, Data and OBS Plugins. So we're just going to copy these. And then we're going to go to your C drive. This is usually where OBS is installed. Program files or Program Files 86. It can be in both. So if you're having troubles installing, try and put it in both of them. So we go to Program Files and then inside OBS-Studio, all lowercase. And we're just going to paste it directly into there. It's going to ask us, are you sure you want to paste it? All that jazz. We're going to say, yeah, that's cool. We're going to replace it. This is what happens if you are updating the plugin. So that is it, all installed. If you've not got Move Transition installed, it will just copy and paste. It will just ask for admin privileges, okay? So now we can open up OBS. So I'm using a blank OBS to start with, and we're just going to open a source. We're going to create a new one and call it text. We're just going to do the text GDI source, and we're just I'm just going to leave it as, uh, we'll call it countdown. Just like that. Count down. Nice one, Andy. Countdown. There we go. Press OK, and we just got. We can obviously adjust the font and do whatever we want. So I'm just going to type in test here, just so we can see that it is actually working. I'm also going to make it a little bit smaller. You can obviously change all your font all you want to. That's fine, but we're just going to press OK for now. Okay, so we've just got this blank test piece of text, and now we're going to manipulate the text. So we're going to click on the text field that we've got and go to filters, or you can right click and press filters. And we're going to add an effect filter. The filter we're going to add is the move value filter. And I'm going to call this uh, countdown. Press OK. And then now you'll see it's created this. When I press it, nothing happens because we've not told it to do anything. So un normally when you're using this filter, you'd be able to select a different filter. We don't want to control the filter. We just want to control the text itself. So we can obviously check the move value type and we can do multiple settings if we wanted to do uh, and everything like that. I'm going to leave it a single setting and the setting we're going to adjust is the actual text that's in the box. So we're going to select text and you'll probably see we've got another drop down now for format type. We've got float format using printf and we've also got time format using strf time and we're going to be using this one. So the format in here is what we want the, the kind of text to, to be. So if I type in this is a test and turn this filter on, it's going to turn that text into whatever I've typed into this box. So we want this to basically be the time. Okay. So the way that we kind of use a variable inside of OBS that Exceldro set up, if I open up my uh, little reference to C++, you don't need to know anything about coding or anything like that. He also has a demonstration on the updates tab that you can see just here how it's working, how he's got the time remaining of hours, minutes and seconds. So you use these little percent sign and then followed by a letter. These are all indicated on this website just here on what they all mean. And this program should understand most of them. So we're going to be using percent sign capital X to do time representation. OK, so if I go back to OBS and type in percent sign capital X. Okay. And we're going to set this to a uh, value of 10. For instance, if I press the, the filter on now, you'll see it'll count up very quickly to 10. The reason why it did it very quickly is because we've not actually told it how long we want it to take to do that. So say if we've got 10, um, just here, we want it, we want to basically times that by a thousand. So if I type in here, um, 10 
10,000. So once 10,000 is in there, we need to turn the easing off because otherwise it's not going to be every second because the reason why we've done the duration times by 1,000 is because this is in milliseconds and this is in seconds. Hopefully that makes sense. So it's going to take 10,000 milliseconds to count up to 10. So first of all, we need to reset it back to zero. So I'm going to type in zero, zero into the actual text source. As you can see, that's reset it. And then now when I turn this filter on, it's going to take 10 seconds, two, three, and we're counting up now, which is awesome. So we can do the exact same thing when it gets to 10. If we replace the value we want it to count to, to zero, because we're already set to 10 seconds here and 10 thousand milliseconds in the the duration when i press this it's going to start now counting down from 10 back down to zero because we've told it to count to zero does that make sense so any amount of seconds we just need to times it by a thousand for the duration so now we can take it one step further say we want to always say a 10 minute countdown timer before we start streaming so we need to create another filter we're going to create a move value filter and we're going to call this start. So this is going to be the start filter. And just like we did before, we're not going to be using another filter or anything. We can leave this on single setting. The only thing we want to change is the text and we change the format to time. So the format that I want is percent sign capital X because that's the, the current format that I want to use. Obviously, we can use different formats as well that you can see from the website. So I'm going to do a 10 minute countdown timer. So this is going to be 600 in here because this is 600 seconds. So if I press start, that's going to set us back to a 10 minute countdown. OK, so the duration, I'm going to put this to 10 and it doesn't matter about easing because we're going to make it. So basically this automatically, whatever we put this to, it's going to automatically switch direct to that number so i've changed it to zero there if i change it back to 600 if i start it automatically goes to a 10 minute countdown timer so this is the start so now we know it's going to be a 10 minute countdown timer so on the countdown clock we need to tell this to count down to zero but we need it to take 10 minutes so we've got 10 already, which is 600. We need to times that by a thousand. So we've got 6,000. That's obviously six seconds. We've got 60,000, which is a minute. We've got 600,000, which is 10 minutes just there. So we just times whatever amount we're putting in by, um, by a thousand. And that's because it's in milliseconds. So now when we press start, it sets it to 10, but we want it to then wait a second and then start counting down. So the way that we do that is select start, go down to the uh, custom, uh, the end delay, sorry. I'm going to put in a thousand milliseconds there. That is just going to give it a second to run this before it starts counting down. So right down at the bottom, the next move we're going to do is count down. Okay. So this is basically saying anytime start gets selected, so if we reset this text box back to zero, so it's complete zeros. When I press start, it's going to set it to 10 minutes and then start counting down because we've told it the next step to do after this filter is run is do countdown. So when I press this, it goes to 10 and you'll see we start now counting down 10 minutes. Easy as that. And you can do this for any amount. OK, so I'm going to actually stop that now. And I'm going to actually make it a smaller amount. I'm going to say 10 seconds. So the start, we're going to say change this to 10 seconds just here. And then on the countdown clock, we need to change the duration. So 10 times 1,000 is 10,000. 10,000 milliseconds just there. And when I press start, it's going to go to 10. And it's going to count us down 10 seconds. Okay. So once that countdown is done, we want to trigger something else. All right, to say that the countdown is done rather than just stay on zero like so. So we can create an end timer as well. So we're going to add another move value and we're going to call this end. Press OK. And again, we're not using a filter or move value type. We're just changing the setting to text because we're going to manipulate the text. Change it to uh, time format again. And the format that we're going to type in here, we're going to leave the value at zero. We're going to put this timer is done like that. Or we could do something like stream starting. Completely up to you what you want to use for your timer. And then we just need to change the duration to 10 to make it happen instantly. You don't need to worry about easing. 
and now because we need it to happen after the countdown's finished we click on countdown go down to the bottom and say the next move we want it to end so right now even though it doesn't look it if i move this one up a level this is easy for you to probably understand now when i press start it's going to start it start counting down and then once countdown's finished it's going to go to end so let's watch it so there we go we're on to 10 you, it changed the filter as you saw we're counting down now waiting until we get to the end which is going to be zero and then it'll say this timer or stream starting and that is it we've created a countdown timer and obviously we can do it the other way around as well so on the start rather than it starting at 10 we can have it count up so if we do zero for the value that we're going to start at and the countdown we obviously need to rename that to count up if we wanted to so we can uh, rename this to count up and we're going to get it to go 10 seconds so we're going to type in 10 so we're just doing it the opposite way around now that's all we need to do press start it's going to start at zero so i played a dum dum there because i've changed the name of the countdown we actually need to change the next move to count up now anytime you rename a filter and you've got it chained in it will actually remove it so you need to re-add it so now when i press start it's going to start counting up to 10 seconds and then it's probably going to say stream starting or whatever note you've put for the end so as you can see like so and that's how it is and like i say it can be a little bit complicated uh, with how that works it is a little bit disjointed but the second it kind of triggers and you you understand it like just remembering whatever you set the value to you just need to change the custom duration to a thousand times that and then that's it it's done as soon as you set this up once it's so easy to just copy and paste because you've got obviously copy filters so you can just right click and press copy filters and put this on any text source wherever you want absolutely easy as pie and obviously remember you've got all these different things just here so in excel uh little uh, demonstration here is using percent sign h which you'll see when it gets to this countdown section, uh, hours and then minutes and then seconds. So you can have it highlighted exactly the same as that, doing the same method, but just change this format. So we'll do that as one little example. So if I just do um, in here, if I press on start, rather than just having the whole time like so, we can obviously see the reference just here. So percent sign capital H is the hour in 24 hour format. We could use percent I if we wanted it in 12 hour. So I'm just going to do um, the minutes for now. So if I go down to percent M, so I'm going to copy that and I'm going to type that in here, percent M minutes. And then I can do seconds as well. So if I probably go down to um, percent S, you can see it is seconds just here. So we're going to copy that as well. And we'll do seconds. And then I'm going to copy this. I'm going to actually put that into the count up format as well, just here. So now when I press um, start, it's going to say zero minutes, zero seconds. And it's counting up seconds now. Because we're just telling this what format to use because the, the system that Excel does use for it. So you can completely customize that to suit exactly what you want. And it is so easy once it does click. Like I say, if you do have any questions, please put them in the comments below. I have fed back a few things that I would like to see. Exceldro has been extending the amount of time that you can put in the custom duration. So you guys that have been using the Move Transition plugin, you'll be like, oh, you, there, there's a maximum amount that you can put in there. Uh, he has been updating that. I, I'm not sure. I think he might be adding some more as well. And he's actually been giving me some sneakies on what else he's going to be adding to this plugin. So stay tuned. Make sure you are subscribed because I'm going to cover it on this channel. And you guys know that I'm probably going to be the first to cover it. So just make sure you're here and you don't miss it. All right, guys. If you want to support me, then consider joining Patreon or joining the YouTube channel members down below. Helps me out massively as these videos take me a long time to do. All that jazz. You guys have made it all before. Right. Much love. We rock the stone and I'll see you in the next one. I just want to say a huge thanks to all my patrons that help make this content full time, make it free for you guys. And also a huge thanks to all my YouTube members. You, you guys are legends. Thank you so much for everything that you do for me and the community. Keep it up, guys.